so here's a video on uh, taking a SketchUp model through to be 3D printed. Uh, there's a few more steps than this available if you have to do some work, but this is a basic run through for a, a simple model. So um, we'll go into uh, Google SketchUp. I have a free version with uh, I think one or two free add-ins as well. So. Here's our model. This is the AML cap for the Learjet um, uh, 45 cockpit build. This fits the uh, AML 21. And uh, going through SketchUp is beyond the scope of this video. So uh, we have our model here. It's complete. And we we'll take our model. We're going to export our model from Google SketchUp and we're going to export it as an OBJ file. So uh, it's already highlighted. Uh, we can put it on the desktop and we'll hit export and ignore that. Perfect. So we're done in Google SketchUp now. Uh, from here we go to a freeware program called MeshLab. Uh, it's a great program. So uh, we'll import the mesh into MeshLab and we'll find our AML dual LED OBJ file and we'll open it up. Perfect. So there are some things we can do in here. There's l tons and tons of stuff in all these programs but basically this this is ready to print. We just need it to make it uh, 3D printer friendly. So from here, uh, we export the mesh as, and we want to export it as an STL file. The reason we do this, uh, we could go right into NetFab, we can even do STLs from SketchUp, I believe, but uh, MeshLab does the best job at, at making this a, a good STL. Um, I have no idea why. This is just trial and error and watching lots of other videos for other models. So uh, let's save it to the desktop. And right now uh, we have an STL that you could send to the printer, but odds are that's not going to work out real well because there's probably problems with the model. Uh, it looks good here. Everything is solid and working, but I'm willing to bet there's an issue. So uh, we'll open it up in a program, freeware program called NetFab. It's uh, another great program. This one has uh, some really great uh, repair features. You can take that file and upload it to the cloud netfab.com, I believe, but you can do it yourself. It's, it's much easier. So we'll go to the desktop. We're going to find the STL file we just exported, and we're going to open it. And right now, this is telling us there's a problem with this model. This would not work out well for 3D printing. So um, take our model and we're going to move it to the origin. We are going to rotate it. And then we are going to move it to the origin again. Perfect. This symbol down here in the corner is still telling us there is a problem with this model. Um, it is right there and there may be others. This program makes it so easy to fix this. It, it's just perfect. So click repair and we're going to do an automatic repair, default repair, and we're going to apply the repair and remove the old part. No more red face down here and no more warning down here. So now we have a, a, a good model uh, that's essentially ready for 3D printing. Uh, there's all kinds of other filters you can do way beyond the scope of this video. Uh, watch, uh, there's a really good one on Vimeo on uh, cleaning up 3D scans. But uh, anyway, we're going to take and go to our part. We're going to export the part as an STL. Uh, we'll take it to the desktop. We have errors here, so we just click repair and hit export. 
done deal. That is the extent of taking a part through from Google SketchUp to being able to print it. Uh, depending on the other problems you may run into, there may be other issues that you'll need to do um, different kind of uh, filtering and tons of stuff you can do, but for this basic model, this is enough. So uh, we have that done, and we'll, in my case, I'm using uh, Repetier, uh, whatever print controller you're using. Um, you just open it up and in this case uh, I really like this program we're going to add the object we're gonna find our repaired STL and we're gonna open it and it's gonna drop it down on the print bed and there we are we can move it around and do all kinds of things uh, this is just an overall view of the print bed we're gonna go up here to slicer uh, I use slicer and I have presets saved for this AML cap. Uh, if need be, I can go through the configuration of the uh, how to do the this specific model. This this configuration is just for the AML caps. So um, if anybody wants it, I can even send the uh, the uh, config files. But it will only work if you have a a solid oodle and you're using the same filament as me and a bunch of other variables. But through trial and error, I've made it work. So we hit slice, and now we have our G code. So we'll show a single layer here, and we can actually see the the tool path that the extruder is going to take up through our dual LED AML cap. Uh, here I have some loops on there just to uh, to get the filament extruding. You can do a raft and various other things. And this this is all specific to this program. So now that we have our G-code, uh, it was really quick because it's a small model. It's quite simple. We would just hit print. Um, but right now I haven't heated up the extruder or the print bed. And once that comes up to temperature, I just click run job and it will run through the g-code and print us, uh, print us a cap. So from Google SketchUp to 3D print in just a few minutes. Uh, once you get good with SketchUp, there's tons of tutorials. I am not good with it, but uh, you can design just about anything. The problem is it just does not get along with 3D prints. So follow this process. Uh, in most cases, it'll work for basic designs and you'll be able to take it right to your printer or send it to have it 3D printed elsewhere. Anyway, thanks for watching.